Before I get into the tutorial, I just wanted to let you know that I'll be streaming as soon as this video goes up over at twitch.tv slash tmillyt, so why not come along and hang out? A large portion of the people who watch my YouTube videos aren't following my Twitch, so if you could come over and follow I'd really appreciate it. You can always unfollow later if you want. Anyway, enjoy the video. Alright, so for this effect to actually work, you need to make sure that the beats of the song actually sync up with the clip to where you can um, sort of bounce the screen. I, I don't really know how to explain it. You'll see when we do it, because I'll put markers to show you where exactly I want the beats to change the screen size. So what you want to do first is you want to listen through the song and listen through the clip and find out where the song hits a beat. So let's have a look through. So here you ready? So that first beat is where we're going to have this get smaller. And then on the other beats, it's going to slowly get larger again. All right, so what we're going to do to place a marker is you just have to press M on your keyboard. So let's find it. And in fact, what we can do is if you hold uh, shift and scroll wheel, you can increase the size of the audio. And we can actually find out where the beat is. So clearly this right here is the beat. So if we listen. So what you want to do is press off of press off of the clip and then press M. And that's a marker for the first beat. And then just mark all the other ones. So I'll, I'll just mark them myself. But you can figure out how to do it. The final beat should be on your kill. Because that's when the screen's going to come full again. Okay. So now let's get into doing the actual screen size. So we can uh, scroll this back that back up by pressing by scrolling down and holding shift. And now this is normal size again. So just go to the first marker and then click on your clip. Go up to the effects tab. Then what you want to do is you want to click on scale, toggle animation, and just a few keyframes in front. So by changing keyframes, you just want to press arrow key. So just a couple in front. You want to have it go to about about seventy percent because I think that probably the easiest and just because of how many clips we've got or how many beats we've got to um sort of bounce so let's just have a look at it now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually add a um bezier onto this um uh keyframe and what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it look a little bit smoother so just to do that what you have to do is right click on this keyframe press continuous bezier and then you're gonna have to so the scale will look like this you're gonna have to click it down and then what you want to do is you want to just zoom in as much as you can and bring this sort of dot thing here across and then up like that. And it should look like this. And it just looks slightly smoother. It goes quicker and then slower at the end. Okay, so now what we want to do is to, to stop the um, keyframe from messing anything up. All we have to do is you have to go one keyframe after this one and then place another keyframe. Then we have to right click on it. So if we uh, go here, we have to right click on it and turn it into a linear keyframe. And what this does is this stops the um, the sort of bezier of this keyframe from affecting all the other ones. It's hard to explain, but you just sort of have to do it. And then this one here, we're gonna place another linear keyframe. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, maybe four. And then we're gonna bring it up to about 75. I don't wanna go too much up from the first one. We'll, we'll increase it, so we'll go up five and then up 10 and then up. Well, up five, then up seven, then up ten, or something like that. So now what you want to do is you want to do another bezier on this one. So just right click, continuous bezier, and then you're just going to zoom in again. Do this, and then just have a look at it. So you see the first one. All right, so let's go to the next one. Zoom back out again. Remember to place the bezier. The um, remember to place the keyframe after this again. So just press arrow key, place another keyframe. Make sure you're zoomed in right click on it and then turn it back to linear again to make sure that it doesn't mess anything up this is really important otherwise you'll have a lot of movement in the screen even when you're you don't want it to be so just make sure you put the linear keyframes afterwards so anyway now on this one we're just going to add a keyframe go about four or three afterwards and then we're going to go to 82 this time so we're going to go up seven we're going to increase it a bit right click continuous bezier zoom back in do the same thing so drag it across and then slide it down to the line and then go one keyframe afterwards, place it, and turn it into a linear keyframe. And then for the final one here, before we do the actual uh, kill, what we want to do is we want to place the last keyframe. I want to go five. I'm going to make it slightly longer this time just because I want to. It's really up to you how long you do it. Just play around with it. I like to do four or five, 90%. Turn it into a continuous bezier. Zoom in a bit and then drag it across and then to the bottom line. And then for the last time, we have to do a linear keyframe afterwards like this. So now we're on the last one. This is when you have to just make it go to the edge. So this is as simple as all the other ones, really. 
just place a keyframe and then about four or five afterwards ooh, you go to 100 and then do the bezier again and then do that and this is what it looks like for now just like that maybe you want to um adjust it a bit i'm gonna actually move this back a bit yeah, I like that. I think I think that's exactly how I'm gonna have it now. Okay, so now we want to add the blurred background of the clip. So all you have to do is you have to get the clip, right click, copy, and then Control V. You could obviously use Control C if you want. And then what you want to do is you want to click on it, right click, and then press unlink. And then delete the audio track just by clicking on it and pressing the backspace button. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to drag your initial clip up and then drag it below your clip. And then you just want to remove all of the scale keyframes from it, from the bottom clip. Okay, so make sure the bottom clip is the one with no scale free keyframes, not the top one. Because that's the one that we want behind it. So you see, you can already see when it moves out, there's the clip behind it. We're just going to blur the clip. So if you just grab Gorge and Blur in the effects tab under blur and sharpen just grab it and then put it on and then you want to click repeat edge pixels and then increase this to about 100 that's where i like it it's really up to you you can choose the blur maybe you want to do loads maybe you want to do less but i'm just going to do it to about 100 this time so this is what it looks like all right and now what we're going to do is we're going to make this sort of darker so it's more noticeable that it sort of pops out so to do that you're going to want to add bcc vin I'm not, even, I'm, I'm not even gonna try vignette it's um it's a bcc effect so you're gonna need to download the plugin bcc if you i'm gonna leave a link in the description to the plugin it is paid so i'm sure you can find another way to get it if you join my discord there'll probably be a link to it so what you want to do is you want to add it and then you want to copy these settings and now what you want to do is you want to go to the start of where this turns into the outside one so like this and you want to go like this keyframe it to when it first moves so just press the arrows so now you're here and then obviously the next one is moved and what you want to do is you want to go to v vignette color opacity and you want to keyframe it on this frame just before it moves and then go one frame across to where it moves and then keyframe it again and on the first frame you want the keyframe to be on zero and on the second one, it should be on 100, like this. You see? And then we obviously want to move to the end. And then on the final frame before it lands, like this, so you see it's like this, we're going to have 100 keyframe, and then move one keyframe again and put it to zero. And this is what the whole thing should look like. I actually just decided because right here, so this is why I've decided this. I'll, I'll run you through it if you want. So, right here, this looks too much like the same. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the blur on the bottom clip just to make it harder to notice. I'm going to put it to about 500. And there you go, it's a little less noticeable. So this is roughly what it should look like. Anyway, I think that's about all you really need to know. Obviously, once you get the kill, you're going to want to put an effect on. If you want to see um, how to make effects like a Nummy Clerk and LMGK, you can check out my other video on um, Nummy and Clerk effects. Although I'm probably going to have a different video on build-ups to effects, so... Um, well, actually, I won't, I won't tell you now because then you won't watch my video, but it's going to be like build-ups. So if you watch like um, any Nummy Clerk or LMGK video, you see that before the kill, there's a lot of stuff that happens. So this is one example, but I think this is complicated enough to deserve its own video, if you know what I mean. But there are other ones that are slightly simpler that I think I'm going to do three or four in one video. So if you want that, let me know. And if not, I'm going to make it anyway. Even if you may just talk and I run with us, niggas are jealous of me, now they tearing up, I'm going hard, now they thinking they...